Hello learners, welcome to our senior secondary environmental science course of NIOS. I am Milam Gupta, course coordinator of environmental science. Welcome to this program of NIOS. Dear learners, by now you have a fairly good idea about origin of earth and its environment. Gradually as humans evolved culturally to meet these growing needs coupled with increasing population and changing lifestyle, humans altered or modified the natural ecosystem greatly for their optimum utilization. After all, there is a limited space on earth and this space has to provide for the unlimited demands of a growing population. How else could they meet the demands? During this program, you will learn about different types of human modified ecosystems and their impact on natural environment. We shall now list a few suggestions to minimize human impact on ecosystem. This is lesson 7 titled Human Modified Ecosystem of Module 2, Ecological Concepts and Issues from Environmental Science course. For this discussion, we have with us Mrs. Sivani Goswami, retired head of the department biology from Mothers International Schools, New Delhi. She has long association with NIOS. She will discuss this lesson in details. Welcome you, madam. Good morning, learners. Our today's lesson is on human modified ecosystem as Neelam ji has just introduced. Thank you, Neelam. Why we need to needed to modify our ecosystem so uh, massively? There are basically three reasons which we have already introduced. One is, of course, increasing population, then changing our lifestyles and over increasing our need. And of course, not to forget greed for more. All these together has resulted in humans modifying our, their natural ecosystem to suit their needs. Now this slide in brief shows what are the major ways in which we have modified our natural ecosystem which consisted primarily of green forests, vast seas, waterways, etc. The three major areas where we have actually modified them into are the industries, in the living areas that is urban settlements and not to forget our agricultural fields where we cultivated our crops. Before we go into the detail of the lesson, let us go through the objectives of the lesson. First, describe the overall changes in the environment due to rapid growth of human population and industrialization in India. List the various human modified ecosystems. Explain formation of agro ecosystems and its impact on natural environment. Mention the impact of human practices and plantation of forests. Analyze the effects of construction of dams and diversions of rivers on ecological balance. List merits and demerits of fish culture and aquaculture. Describe urban areas as human modified ecosystems and their environmental consequences. Suggest methods to minimize human impact on ecosystems. Our first modified human ecosystem, we are going to list quite a few, but the foremost characteristic of such ecosystems, the modified ecosystems is that they are not dependent upon solar energy instead fossil fuel and electricity provides energy to the industries. Now next slide will show you the, the various modified ecosystems. They are agroecosystem, plantation forest, urban ecosystem, rural ecosystem, agriculture and industrial areas. And lastly, it is a laboratory culture of organisms. Now characteristics of human modified ecosystems are they are highly simplified, species diversity is very low, food chains are very simple and low, then depend upon human or anthropogenic support for survival in the form of fossil fuel energy, fertilizer, irrigation, etc. They attract large number of weeds. This is because we have modified the environment of such ecosystems. So there are invasions by organisms which find such environment more suitable, more susceptible for en endemic diseases. They suffer from soil erosion and lastly they are highly unstable. 
Now, what is the impact of increasing human population and industrialization on uh, in environment in India? Rapid increase in human population is the starting point. We have become far too many. They need higher demand for natural resources because we need to meet their requirements. Industries are increasing. There is no questioning that, yes, industries give more employment opportunities, produce more commodities for our consumption, but very, very large value we pay for it, and that is all these activities are severely affecting our environment. Some of these are pollution first. Now, use of science and technology has contributed immensely towards the development of mankind, but its misuse has caused environmental pollution too. Pollution has direct or ad indirect adverse effect on humans and other organisms. One of the examples that is imprinted in our memory is Bhopal gas leakage in 84. This leakage took uh, off MIC, that is methyl isocyanate gas from Union Carbide Company, killed more than 2,000 people. That is the official record. Their storage tank in uh, Jaipur had caught, because of a blast, caught fire that continued burning for seven days or more, and it caused heavy losses. Next effect of this industrialization on environment is global warming. Increasing use of fossil fuels is a leading cause of increasing levels of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. This atmospheric buildup of greenhouse gases have caused considerable heating of earth leading to global warming. It leads to melting of glaciers and rise in sea level causing threat to low-lying coastal areas, especially in thickly populated coastal cities such as in our country, it is Mumbai, Chennai, Kolkata. We do remember the havoc heavy rains have caused in Kerala very, very recently. The pictorial depiction shows the global warming phenomenon. A part of the solar energy is received by the Earth's surface, but another part is reflected back. But the part that is absorbed by the Earth's surface is converted into heat energy, long wavelengths, and we call it in brief as the infrared radiation. Some of this energy is absorbed by the greenhouse gases that are increasingly present in our atmosphere. And whatever is absorbed is retained and causing the heating up of our Earth's surface. And that is what we call as the global warming. Next ill effect of man-made ecosystems due to industrialization is human health, effect on human health. The pictorial depiction shows that increase in the population is leading to environmental pollution and overcrowding. As a result, there is increase in incidents of epidemic diseases such as AIDS, hepatitis, bird flu, swine flu, cancer, etc. Friends, remember, all these diseases are reported at higher magnitude from congested uh, populations of our country because not only these, these areas are congested, free air supply is also prohibited and their malnourished population normally resides over there. The next ill effect can be read as over-exploitation of natural resources. A larger population needs more food, more material. Now, one of the ways to meet that is introduction of a new genetically modified organism. We call it as GMO or by over-exploitation of the ecosystem which reduces their productivity. The picture shows the first, that is when we introduce the genetically modified organisms or they are high yielding types and it can also be by introducing alien species in a natural ecosystem. All these things ultimately result in reducing the population of native species, that is the species which were residing in that locality where such 
organisms are introduced. This pictorial depiction shows over harvesting of edible fishes, be it from river or from oceans, that reduces their reproductive rate because we are catching them when they are still young before they reach the reproductive maturity. And this leads to reduction in their uh, reproduction rate and ultimately it may lead to their extinction. One of the recent examples of such extinction is Bombay duck fish. Our next ill effect is deforestation. Friends, rapid growth of population leads to deforestation, intense cultivation, over irrigation and over grazing because our cattle are more, our human heads are more, we need to produce more for them. So ultimately the land comes from the forest. What does it all lead to? They lead to loss of topsoil and fertile land. When this goes on for a very long time, that is natural ecosystem undergoes prolonged degradation of lands, it leads to desertification. The right diagram shows the desert formation. Next ill effect is the effect on water bodies. All types of water bodies are being increasingly abused. They are being used for disposal of liquid and effluents and all kinds of waste. We are quite familiar with these ill effects. We keep seeing such effects on our rivers every day and there are a large number of projects which tend to clean up Yamuna, clean up Ganga. This pictorial depiction shows the present status of Yamuna River in India. Now our next item and the modified human modified e ecosystem is the agro system and agricultural practices. Agro ecosystem or crop ecosystems are large areas when commercial crops are cultivated by humans for economic purposes. In such ecosystem, usually only one type of crop is grown on the entire field and this practice is called monoculture. Mono means one. So when we are culturing only wheat or only pulses or only paddy, it becomes a monoculture example. Otherwise, sometimes two or more crops are also grown simultaneously. One fourth of Earth's terrestrial ecosystem is changed into cultivated system. Now, what are the characteristics of agro ecosystem? These are listed in this slide for you. And on the right hand side, the Characteristics of human modified ecosystem in general are also listed for your revision. Now the characteristic of agro ecosystem are the species diversity is lowest. We are growing either one or two crops only. They are highly unstable and not self-sustaining. They are dependent upon humans for their survival and care. They attract weeds and susceptible to plant diseases. Soil becomes poor, deficient in nutrients and they require supplements of chemical or fertilizers. Friends, this is so because we are not really allowing the soil to re recuperate from the previous cultivation. And before that we sow the next crop. So it, larger and larger amounts of nutrients are withdrawn from the soil. To sup supplement them, we then resort to artificial for, uh, chemicals or fertilizers. There is need for artificial irrigation as well and we need to have our water management system in place. So friends, these were the characteristics of an agro ecosystem. Now what is their economic importance? Fulfill the basic requirements of food, fruit and edible oil, etc. They also are, they provide good quality grains and high yielding uh, crops and they also provide employment to many, many farmers. What are the disadvantages? Large scale monoculture of crops result in severe loss of native biodiversity, including genetic diversity of crop plants. Next ill effect is depicted in the pictorial depiction here. This is a picture from the Brazilian forest which are being cleaned up at a very, very fast speed. It is on the left side upper part, it is showing the forest as it was earlier. Now it has been cleared primarily for soya sowing. 
Soya beans are very rich in protein and they are primarily grown for supplementing the food for the cattle that is being bred. And the right hand side upper corner shows you a giant bundle liana. Liana is a hardwood climbing type of plant which grows in abundance in natural forest. But this particular liana is an endangered species now listed and if this deforestation continues very soon this particular plant is going to become extinct. On the left hand side there is a uh, frog species which is depicted, it is a tree frog which again is very sensitive to the environmental changes and it is also listed as a threatened species. The right hand side lower picture that is of a chelonia, it is a turtle, green turtle we refer to it and it is in Hawaiian coral reef and although it is an endangered species, its habitat loss is endangering its survival too. Now, high yielding varieties are more susceptible to diseases like smut in sugarcane, maize, sorghum. This picture shows the smut on wheat plant. The red spots depict the diseased areas of the leaf. Such ecosystems are dependent upon intensive irrigation leading to groundwater depletion and runoff water from agricultural feeds also add chemicals and pollute the water bodies. This is the picture of our river which has received large number of pollutants from the sewer lines. Now next is plantation forest. The characteristics are plantation forests are generally monoculture like oil, palm cultivation, rubber, coffee, etc. Plantation forests have trees of approximately the same age and such forests are highly susceptible to pathogens. Uh, friends, these are very, very common to any of the man-made ecosystem characters. They are poor, poor species diversity, require human involvement and recently plantation of Jatropa have become very popular for obtaining biodiesel. So tree plantations are raised for fruit oil, rubber, coffee, timber, firewood and pulp wood for making rayon, synthetic fiber and paper industries. Our next is tree plantation. The picture shows three types of plantation. The first one on top is Jatropa, the left hand corner is sandalwood and the right hand side is of Christmas trees for various commercial purposes. This is showing Cassiurina plantation as windbreakers. Friends, try and look for some other plantation trees which have another use besides what is listed in your lesson right now. All these plantations help in preventing soil erosion and increase soil fertility and of course they provide job opportunities. Next is urban ecosystem. Urban life is the life of a city where many people live close together. Presently all over the world people are moving to towns and cities and the reason primarily are economic. In 1800 only 5 percent of the world population was urban whereas in at present, it is 45 percent of world population is urban developing. And by 2030, it is going to be 60 percent of world population living in cities. Now, characteristics are high population density. It is observed in Malta, that is Africa, with 1,000 and 100 per person per square kilometer. And similarly, the rest are also listed. The next characteristic is congestion, shortage of housing and growth of slum areas. Import increasing amount of energy, food and other commodities. Then congestion, shortage of housing and growth leads to slum development, generate large quantities of waste and pollutants causing environmental pollution. More employment opportunities are there and of course there is a tough competition also. There is better educational facilities and medical facilities and more and diverse source of entertainments are available. This is a pictorial depiction of the city life, disadvantages and advantages listed. We have air pollution, high density congestion and waste generation as disadvantage and better schools, 
better in entertainment and better hospitals as advantages. Advantages of urban ecosystems are listed on your screen. Economically well-developed, hub of industrial growth and center of commerce. Then reduce infantile mortality, which is a very, very important index. The centers of political activities, but the disadvantages of urban ecosystem are urban areas consume 75 percent of Earth's resources and generate 75 percent of waste. Next is our rural ecosystem. What are rural ecosystems? They are the midway between natural and urban ecosystem. Exploitation of nature by human is relatively less and rural people live relatively closer to nature and follow simple life. This is a depiction which we are quite familiar with. And what are the characters? Very similar. People live in small clusters in thatched and mud houses. Primary occupation is related to agriculture. Education, healthcare, and drainage are, and transport are inadequate. That is one of the reasons why they are trying to tend to move to urban settlements. Free from air and noise pollution, and to, they reduce the migration of people to cities. More employment opportunities need to be generated in visitors. This is just a question for you. Why do we like to go on a holiday outing if we are living in cities? Try and un uh, answer this question. Now, aquaculture is our next item. It is artificial cultivation of aquatic animals and plants. It is primarily practiced for cultivating some important edible species of freshwater and marine water, fish, mollusks, crustaceans, and aquatic plants are utilized for this purpose. Of the large variety of fish, we usually consume only 22 species of fish. The next point is the fishery includes extraction of food from sea, fresh water, that is the natural environment which is existing. Whereas aquaculture is rearing of aquatic organisms in artificially made water bodies. Examples are culturing calves, tilapia, etc. These are the pictures of rohu fish, katla fish and tilapia normally cultured in aquacultures. Now the next de detail this particular picture is showing the nets being used by the fishermen and fish farming is cultivation of fish in a controlled environment, often a coastal or island pond, lake, reservoir or rice field. Harvesting is done when the, reach the, the fish reaches the desired size. Fish ranching is a practice of keeping fish in captivity for few years in floating cages and in coastal lagoons and releasing them from captivity into water bodies. When adults come back for spawning or laying eggs, they are caught. Example is hilsa and salmon cultivation. These are the pictorial depiction of the two fishes. India has a very large coastal line for trapping seafood from these resources. Bay of Bengal, Arabian Sea, etc. are some of the examples and our peninsula shows the picture on your screen. India's inland water occupy about 1.6 million hectares in the form of river systems, canals, etc. where we can practice fishery. The fresh cultured fishes are mostly varieties of carps. Tilapia, salmon, trouts and some more species of fish are cultured in net pens, milk fish and millets in enclosures or bam bamboo fences. Fish can grow well even in low protein diet, that's one of the advantages and are resistant to many diseases. It can breed rapidly under captivity. Advantages of aquaculture, ecological efficiency is high, 2 kgs of grain are required to add 1 kg of live weight. They are high yielding, improve quality of fish by selective breeding, aquaculture reduces over harvesting of fisheries and we, it is a highly profitable business. Disadvantages are large inputs of feed, water and land are required and loss of native aquatic diversity as it is replaced by monoculture of commercially important fish. Next, produces large amount of waste that pollutes the water body and it of course destroys mangrove forest or coastal vegetation. Aquaculture fishes are very sensitive to pesticide runoff from croplands. They, the aquaculture ponds are highly populated density 
is maintained and that makes them highly vulnerable to diseases leading to total collapse of the crop. These reservoirs often get contaminated in a few years time. Next is dams, reservoirs and diversions. A dam is a structure that is built to store river or tidal water. Dams, reservoirs and diversions capture and store runoff water to be released as and when needed. Advantages of these dams, etc. They control or moderate downstream flooding, reduce river silting, supply water for irrigation and industry and other uses. Water released from dams is used to generate hydroelectric power. This reduces use of coal and reduction of CO2 emission and super recreational activities like swimming and boating is allowed. This is a pictorial depiction of Bhakra Dam which we are all very, very familiar, Bhakra and Nangal, the two sister dams that are built very early in our, after our independence. The disadvantages are their high cost activities, permanently submerge large areas of forest and croplands and displace large number of native people and it increases water pollution due to reduced water flow in rivers. And it also reduces nutrient replacement downstream, disrupts spawning and migration of fish species, and large dams increase the risk of including earthquakes in earthquake prone areas. Industrialization is the next one. It, industrial processes involves mining, metallurgy, welding, grinding, and chemical synthesis. And they do include the ill effects pollution, gaseous pollutants, etc. The particulate matter is increased, radioactive substances are released. They also involve burning of plastic that emits PCBs, that is polychlorinated biophenyls, which are harmful for the lungs, and accidental release of poisonous gases like phosphogene and methyl isocyanate we have already discussed. And secondary air pollutants are equally harmful for our breathing of uh, living organisms. Land use and habitat destruction also leads to ill effects. 83% of Earth's surface is modified to fulfill the needs of growing human population. Industries and modern transport networks have fragmented the natural habitat. This is seriously affecting the growth and reproduction of wild species of plants and animals, resulting in loss of biodiversity. And not to uh, miss out, it has ill effects on human health too. Use of various types of chemicals today have serious health implications. Incidents of cancer, genetic disorder, damage to nervous systems are some of the few examples that we can list. The increased sensitivity to the disease also is one of the fallouts of this high industrialized environment. Genetic resistance is another fallout of this, negative fallout of this practice. Large amount of antibiotics, insecticides, pesticides are speeding up directional natural selection and has caused emergence of genetic resistance in pathogens. And effect on native population, introduction of new alien species affect the native population such as water hyacinth. Now, how to minimize these effects? Of course, the first requirement is we reduce our own need we did look at our needs as our greed really. Lesser we demand on nature, lesser harmful effects will be there on the environment. But we cannot trace our path back. One of the essential steps to be taken forward is eco-industrial revolution, which is in very brief refers to redesigning our industries in such a way that the affluence of one industry is becoming a raw material for the next industry. So we have to change our planning system so that we, f we can reduce our uh, effluence and produce better and more products from the known amount of raw material. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Shivani ma'am, for sharing information related to human modified ecosystem. Before we wrap up, we would like to recap the main points that is what you have learned. Most of the current environmental problems are caused by the uncontrolled growth of human population and growing urbanization and industrialization 
over harvesting of any species of plant or animals should be controlled in maintaining ecological balance. Agroecosystems have created many environmental problems such as soil erosion, groundwater depletion and environmental pollution by fertilizers and pesticides. Eco-industrial system should be encouraged to protect the environment. Human modified ecosystems are man-made ecosystem such as agroecosystem, aquaculture, pond, cities, etc. for their own benefits. They require inputs of fossil fuel for their survival, growth of population and migration of people from rural areas to cities is the root cause of increased urbanization. All human modified ecosystems suffer from loss of biodiversity and are not sustainable on their own. Dear learners, this is all about lesson 7, human modified ecosystem. We will come again to meet you with a new program of environmental science. Thank you.